The entire congregation exclaimed in shock when the pastor's wife made her confessions. She had just admitted the shocking revelation that Mr. Johnson was not the father of the baby she was carrying in her womb. Everyone held their breath as she was about to name the one responsible. My heart raised at what sounded like 200 beats per second. Was she going to call my name? I thought to myself, I have never had any relations with this woman. But even while thinking about it, I wasn't convinced. Maybe I was responsible. I had my suspicions for a while. What you're about to hear surpasses all understanding of what you know and even trust about humans. This might be disturbing or uncomfortable, so beware. Let me tell you everything. You may be wondering how we got to this point and how on earth can someone impregnate a woman without even knowing and more to that, dear pastor's wife. Well, this is what happened. Our pastor and his wife, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, have been married for 10 years without children. All their efforts to conceive proof abortive and this became a serious reproach to the couple especially to mrs johnson mr johnson's family began disrespecting and calling her names accusing her of being barren and unable to give them a grandchild all this without mr johnson making any effort to defend his wife perhaps he had let his own frustration get in the way this however wasn't the most frustrating to mrs johnson what overwhelmed her the most was the fact that Mr. Johnson refused to accompany her to medical checkups, claiming everything is fine with him. It's not unusual in this culture for all the blame of childlessness to be placed on the woman, as though men too can suffer from barrenness. Though when they got to church, they put on a happy face for the congregation, deep down the pressure was mounting on Mrs. Johnson as the years went by. It was a matter of time before she would snap. Added to all of this, rumors and gossip spread among the congregants that the pastor's wife was unable to conceive in spite of preaching fruitfulness to other couples and helping them have their own babies. This was disheartening, but as you expect in a place where different kinds of people come for help, also known as church, I tried my best to shield her from all this noise. I had been serving as the pastor's PA for four years already, so I had become very close to the family. I would do my best to keep sharing with Mrs. Johnson the testimonies from all the couples she had helped believe and conceive, hoping to keep her hope alive. But as time went on, it became clear that such testimonies were becoming more irritating than inspiring. What kind of doctor treats others but cannot treat themselves? Any reasonable person in her shoes would ask themselves. On this fateful Saturday afternoon, I went to assist Mrs. Johnson at home with some basic chores as it was a tradition for them to receive guests at home after the service on Sunday. When I got there, her husband Mr. Johnson was still in church holding some counseling sessions. To my surprise, she had cleaned everything and was rounding up in the kitchen. She insisted on serving me food even though she knew it was customary for us leaders to fast on Saturday in preparation for Sunday. Well, she is the mama, so I didn't want to offend her and had to comply. A slow eater as I am, I barely went halfway into my food when I started feeling dizzy and passed out. I didn't check the exact time I got there, but by my estimate, two hours had passed when I woke up to a strange feeling in my body and a bone the type men only get early in the morning some days. It was obvious that something had happened to me while I was out. My clothes were visibly twisted and the belt on my trouser was not as fastened as I left it. What happened to me, I wondered. Thoughts of abuse crossed my mind, but knowing I was in the presence of someone I trusted and esteemed, I quickly wiped them off. A couple of weeks later, Mrs. Johnson shared her testimony in church that she had been confirmed pregnant for the first time in 10 years. You can't imagine the delirium in church that day. Though I was really glad for her, the information quickly brought up thoughts from the past week's incident. I was beginning to freak out a little. At 23, I knew full well how the human procreation systems work. Meanwhile, Mrs. Johnson continued to act completely normal towards me, sometimes perhaps even kinder than usual. I felt like there was an unspoken fact that I had her secret and had to live with it for the rest of my life. I rationalized that perhaps my brain was just overthinking and that Saturday incident didn't exactly happen. Perhaps I just had a dream. 
I thought everything was going on fine until this lady showed up at church insisting the pastor had made a baby with her 15 years ago and abandoned her. Mr. Johnson admitted to having been leading a promiscuous life 15 years ago before being born again but even so, he didn't recognize ever having a baby. Knowing the potential of such stories to destroy the image of the church for good, Mr. Johnson had no choice but to take a paternity test to settle the matter once and for all. At first sight, the young girl really looked like the pastor and anyone would have no trouble concluding that this was his offspring. As looks can be deceiving, the test didn't only come out negative but the doctor released the biggest bombshell we had had up till then. Our pastor, Mr. Johnson, was impotent and had always been. Not only he wasn't the father of this imposter woman's daughter, he was certainly not the father of the baby growing in his wife's womb. My heart dropped like the engine of a 30-ton lorry when the rumors finally got to me. My conscience had not been at peace the past weeks, but I had no idea how to bring up the matter. How will I explain to my trusted spiritual authority that I had an affair with his wife? And moreover, that it was 100% her fault? Who in this generation will believe that a viral young man like myself can be abused? Mr. Johnson was furious and had made up his mind to publicly disgrace his wife by having her confess to her crime before divorcing her. So that's how we found ourselves on this uneventful Sunday service when suddenly he took the mic and started veering off the normal service schedule. After lamenting his predicament, he called forth Mrs. Johnson who wasn't shy to admit her crime. As a matter of fact, she rather shocked the entire congregation and left Mr. Johnson dumbfounded as she shared all the emotional and psychological trauma she's endured for the past 10 years without any support. She said it was mentally disturbing when her husband wouldn't go for checkups, making her doubt the positive report the doctors gave concerning her. All this, plus the incessant maltreatments from her in-laws, made her start losing her mind, having very negative thoughts about her life. She said she became so desperate that all she wanted was a clear confirmation of whether something was wrong with her or not, and the only way was to try to conceive with another person. She knew it was horribly wrong, but given how low she had gone, this was the only thing that could save her life and give her sanity again, even if it would cost her marriage, she said. The congregants went from judgmental hisses to dead silence of compassion. As she proceeded to name the person responsible for the baby, the whole congregation went dead silence. My heart was pounding so loud, I thought everyone could hear it. I held my breath hoping she's not going to call my name, when suddenly she called me forth as the donor to her experiment. My nightmare, which up till then had only been a nightmare, became full-blown reality. It seemed the pastor was about to murder me with his fierce eyes when she went on to say I was innocent and narrated how she did everything that fateful Saturday without my consent. She said, if there's anyone who truly deserves her apology, it is me. To be honest with you, I can't find words to express how I felt at that instant. At the end of it all, Mr. Johnson, in total shame, knelt with his wife and began apologizing for making her bear all the shame and reproach and trauma of a medical condition he was the one suffering from all these years. He pledged to take her back with the child as his own price to pay for his insensitivity, carelessness and stubbornness. I don't know if it was any comfort to myself knowing that she used an equipment to extract what she needed for the medical fertilization procedure, but that is exactly what she said. Given that sperm banks are not common in our setting, she had to get a donor by herself and so it happened to be me. I'm still processing this roller coaster experience, but as it came to some sort of a happy ending, or let's say not as terrible as it could have been if the church had lost their mother to mental health. Please share in the comments below 1. What you think of this story and 2. What would you do if you were in my place and 3. What can be done to address the one-sided emotional torture suffered by many women in childless marriages. Hope this story taught you a thing or two. You can support this channel by partnering with us on our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Smash that like button and subscribe and until the next one, remain inspired.